sort of scope through the skin underneath, as you can see here, underneath the, uh, the fat, between the fat and that ligament. And then what we do is we cut a third of that ligament from the big toe to maybe one third of the way over to the heel. And 90% of the time, I can get rid of at least 75% of the pain. It's nothing that mm -hmm. you're, you're not going to get up and instantly feel better, but you will feel better over time. It is a one surgical thing, procedure, one though. One thing, Dr. Ken, I like to stress upon my patients is surgery is not an end-all of plantar fasciitis or heel pain. Oh, absolutely A lot not. of times you can get rid of the problem for a good year, two years, three years, but once that patient puts on a good 30 pounds, that heel pain is going to come right back. Well, statistics, <laughs> there was a study out that said that statistically, if you did surgery on every heel pain that mm -hmm. came into the office initially, you're only going to get 50% results. Mm -hmm. So surgery is not the mm -hmm. end all and be all. Mm -hmm. But if you exhaust four to nine months of conservative care, mm -hmm. then the success rate goes up to 90%. Mm -hmm. and, then, and I tell my patients, 90% of the time, I can get rid of at least 75% of the pain. And Dr. Jacoby, what I usually explain to my patients is there's a ligament that goes from the ball of the foot all the way to the toe area. Mm -hmm. And when you lay down for a long period of time or sit down for a long period of time, that ligament has a tendency to tighten up. Then when you get up and start walking, it starts pulling from the heel, and that's how heel pain starts. And with the eventually, when you continue to pull from the heel, you'll get like what you call a little heel spur coming off of the back of the heel. And when you take an x-ray, you'll see the spurring on the back of the heel, like this is, this is our bones. You'll see a big spur coming on the back of the heel. This is the heel of the foot. And after you get that big spurring on the back of the heel, that's what causes the pain. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there a caller? Hi. Hi. Yes. Oh, good evening. I have a question. What does it do like when you get menopausal and the bottom of the foot becomes extremely dry? You get all this dry uh, skin. What are your suggestions for that? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna dump that <laughs> off to Chantel because I haven't gone <laughs> well, through. Even though my wife thing, thinks I've gone through my own menopause. One thing about becoming uh, menopausal, you have a tendency. You have a hormone change. You have a tendency your skin as a whole gets dry. I'm sure your foot is not the only place where it is getting dry. Usually you get a dry scalp. People have a tendency to get more dandruff. People have a tendency to get more scaly all over. And usually that can be um, taken care of like if you're going to be placed on a hormone replacement type of medication. Or sometimes it will just pass. But if you have extremely dry skin, you can use some of the over-the-counter things like, uh, I hate to say, eucerin cream. Mm -hmm. or uh, those, you can go Those to creams have mineral oil in them. I'm trying to find something that doesn't have mineral oil. Why you don't want to use mineral oil? Because this creates like a barrier on your skin. Well, that's in theory what you want to try to do so you can keep yeah. the, uh, yeah, the moisture on in. Yeah, you want to you want to have something some kind of emollient. Uh, you can go to your podiatrist and they can recommend some type of cream. They can give you a prescription for some type of cream, uh, like Triumph Sure. Uh, that doesn't have mineral oil in it. Uh, uh, what you can yeah, do yeah. if if you're looking for a physician, you can call the Illinois Podiatric Medical, Medical Association. Association and their telephone number. Uh, we don't have that written down unfortunately, but is area code eight four seven area code three one two. Four two seven fifty eight ten, and you can talk to someone, and they can find yeah, a podiatrist. Yeah, they can refer you to a podiatrist. And here's the website: www.ipma.net, and uh, you can find a podiatrist in your zip code. Okay, Thank you guys. for your call. Yes. Hello. Good afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon. I'm I'm a waitress. Mm -hmm. I have cra uh, chronic tendinitis on my left foot, and I have very bad spurs on my right foot. I want to know. I get I get cortisone shots, but it doesn't seem to help me, and doesn't stay too you know too long. Are you overweight? Yes. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, if you drop ten to twenty pounds, mm -hmm. a lot of your heel pain will go away. I always tell my patients an yeah. overloaded truck wears its tires out quick. So, <laughs> and you know what? Losing weight is really quite <laughs> difficult. There's no question. Losing weight is difficult. Yeah, but it that's is. The, that that's. That's where it all starts. And mm -hmm. then what you need to do, you, the most important thing is to control the function of the foot. Mm -hmm. And so just getting yeah. a cortisone shot. Cortisone shot. And uh, I'm sure if you go to a podiatrist, they can make you some good art supports to wear in your work shoes. And wearing the right type of work shoes, you can at least uh, alleviate the heel pain so that you can work 
comfortably. Um, it won't go away totally, but if you can alleviate it so you can work comfortably, I think that's the main goal you want to achieve. And a good pair of shoes and a good pair of art supports and probably a uh, anti-inflammatory medication that you can take daily, like a Motrin, an Advil, or a Naproxen. Mm -hmm. uh, you just have to control the heel pain. Um, you won't probably get rid of it, but we can control it. And it will go away. Yeah. It should go away over time. It's not going to... What we've given you is not a panacea, but I would say if we're mm -hmm. controlling you well, then over two to four months, yeah. it, it's going to get better. You'll have good days and bad days. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for your call. Is there another caller? Hello? Hello? Yes, I was uh, calling to ask about uh, this uh, heel slash ankle pain that I have. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I, I respond really well to, to anti-inflammatory such as uh, Indocin or mm -hmm. uh, ibuprofen. Mm -hmm. But it seems to take care of only like maybe 90% of the pain and it kind of goes away, but after a while it flares back up. Do they have you, are you doing anything else other than taking medication? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. The most, it's, a good analogy is if you have a fever caused by a bacterial infection and I give you aspirin, for the four hours that you're taking the aspirin, your fever is gone. But if I give you antibiotics, which takes care of the cause, then the fever will break on its own. So the most important thing is that we control the abnormal mechanics in your mm -hmm. foot. And if we can control you with an orthotic over mm -hmm. two to four months, you should get better. So that's where you got to start. The anti-inflammatory medications get good supportive shoes. And if you're not moving in the right direction, you should see a podiatrist and have an orthotic made before you go any other way. Okay. I'm also not a fan of over-injecting yeah. the heel. I don't go mm -hmm. more than three injections because yeah, then I find the, the heel pad starts wearing away. Mm -hmm. Thank a you good, for your call. A good shoe. Thank you. Yes? Another caller? Hey. Hi. How are you? I want to ask about twisted toes. Okay. Shoot. Uh, when they're twisted, going left and right on the top oh. of a toe. Please. Oh. I have a friend whose toes is like that, and I tell him, you need to go to the doctor. <laughs> she <gonna> happen. <laughs> she, she probably has a big bunion with hammer toes. Is that what you're calling twisted toes? Um, yeah. Put Huh? Put that when, on you twist, when, when you twist, when you were, you were about to do it, twist oh. the toe. Okay, where the like it, like, it looks like yes. the second toe is thumbing a ride. Yes. Oh yeah, that's a bad bunion. Uh, are they in any pain? Uh, I'm not sure okay. about that. Well, they probably need to see a good podiatric surgeon or podiatric uh, physician and have a good x-ray taken, and then they can evaluate what the problem is. Uh, that's probably from a long-standing uh, structural deformity called a bunion, and which brings about hammer toes and other problems. So it all depends upon the patient and how they're feeling and how they are wearing their shoes. So you take the whole um, evaluation of the patient into content. One more question. Thank yes, you. Uh, what about toes all the same size? The big toes and the uh, middle toes are about the same as the big toe. Well, 50, Can that be corrected? Yeah, but you know what? I am not a proponent. 50% of the people have a long second toe. 50% of the people have a long first toe. Yeah. I tell people... Don't worry about it unless it becomes a problem. Yeah, Don't do surgery on your yeah. feet unless you have a problem. I mean, I, I, you know, you could be a perfect example if someone comes in with a huge bunion. First mm -hmm. question I'll ask: Does it hurt? If it doesn't hurt, I say, leave Don't it alone. worry about it. Leave it alone. That's what I usually say. If it doesn't hurt, leave it alone. Okay. Thank you for your call. Any more calls? Um, okay. Let's talk about other forms of, of treatment for, or, and other surgical forms of treatment for heel pain. Okay. Uh, we talked about the endoscopic plantar fasciotomy. Um, there, they talked about shockwave treatment. That's a big buzzword over yeah. the last few uh, years. The, the shockwave treatment has gotten a lot of um, uh, public relations through the news media. Mm -hmm. I think a couple of the big channels have ran uh, uh, advertisements about shockwave. And shockwave is essentially uh, taking taking a modality like a shock wave or like radio, radio waves and pushing